Hey everybody, my name is Jason Creel and this is the Lawn Care Life. Sometimes on my channel, people ask me for an update on my lawn. If you follow the channel, you'll know that this property I'm standing on, about three and a half years ago when we bought the property, it was solid woods. I mean, so thick, you barely could walk through it. And in this video, I just want to give you an update. I want to show you some old clips of what it used to look like and now show you today what my yard looks like and how we have transformed it and I maybe give some tips on how I did it in the process. Today's video is sponsored by my friends at Yardbook. If you're looking for a lawn care software, go to yardbook.com. I've been with Yardbook since 2015. Scraped it down and, and tilled it up and got it, you know, most of the way level, got the hills and, and things out of it. Now it's, it's still not perfect. I'll probably drag it later and try to, to make it more level. So anyway, you can see what, what he's done today. There is a fence back here, so I don't know if, you know, I've even thought about the possibility of getting some goats. Because you can see here, we've got a fence that would probably hold a goat, maybe. I'm not much on goats, but I know they'll, they'll keep our property cleaned off. So that's one suggestion. But you can see, there's two piles of, of limbs left that's not that big. So, you know, whenever it gets a little bit dry next week, hopefully he can come grab these last two piles of limbs and, and get rid of them. There's one, there's one over there as we walk this way. But let me show you in the back. He, he's gonna grade this out today. Show you on the, the very back. I live close to the interstate, so you're gonna hear some truck noises. I could have an on ramp coming out of my backyard, I guess, but I don't think they would allow that. I'm not sure I really want that. But so this is the part that's, that's been done, pretty much done. And it's not gonna be like perfectly level, like if you did it with a, a bulldozer. I thought about getting them something to drag it with, but I've not plugged it. But what did survive has been spreading. So you can see all that bright green grass is Bermuda. So there is a decent amount that's been spreading this year. Again, not as much back here because that's where all the trees were stacked. Uh, I think I can make a pretty nice driving range out here, football field, soccer field, ultimate Frisbee, kickball, whatever. So we've started the the sodding process and I know what you're thinking if you see this you're gonna be like Jason I think you missed a spot you know all right so let me give you the story here we've got about four acres and again when I bought the house this was all wood so thick that you could not even walk through it or very difficult walking let me just say that all kind of brush and briars and there was almost no desirable trees what i knew i did have is in the distance if you can see that gigantic oak tree there we saw it and then i've got a gigantic oak tree here and so i thought well there's two gigantic oak trees but pretty much the rest of it is all just trash and what we did we had a guy come in with a big excavator and he just started tearing stuff up and piling it up and that was a big process. For me, I didn't understand what was the point of having several acres of land if you really couldn't use much of it. And I'm not to say that sometimes wooded land is not valuable, um, but again, this is uh, just nasty overgrown briars and stuff. And I've got children, we wanted to have a place to play. So here it is today. We've got uh, soccer fields out here. There is a golf flag out there in the distance. So I have about 130 yard driving range. I'm planning to cut the grass today. But what we did, if you can see this particular area back here is probably close to two acres. Well, if I would have sodded this, it would have cost a lot of money. The other problem is trying to seed it is not exactly cheap either. And even seeding it, uh, you gotta figure out, well, how are you gonna water it? Because seeding our warm season grasses, we typically do when, it, when the weather is hot and trying to keep this watered was a challenge. So I thought my best opportunity was to just plug some sod. So here's what happened. It took forever to get the guy to haul the trees off. So when he finally did that, actually while they were still piled up, I got some plugs of sod. Okay, so it, it had been a, through a sod farm. They cut it into, into normal pieces of sod and they run it through some machine that chops it up. 
which is great for Bermuda grass if you can keep it watered. It's just gonna help it spread all much faster because it spreads extremely fast, it's drop tolerant. Well, by the time we did that, it was in the summertime, super hot, and it became very difficult to keep it watered. And uh, also we went through a, a pretty bad dry spell. So a lot of it died, but a little bit of it survived. I was out here watering it by hand and just trying to step on it and squish it down in the dirt. So if you can get the roots in the dirt, it has a much better chance of surviving. Well, a little bit of that survived, but not a whole lot to be honest with you. I think it was the following year before the guy finally hauled off the trees, which were piled up on one half of the yard. At that point, we took two pallets of sod on the back of a trailer and we just drove around this property and just took the whole piece of sod and just threw them out randomly no particular order to the madness and just spread them out through here well it began to spread again i did that when it was also hot not very smart on my part uh, probably should have did it in the winter time was able to keep a lot of that alive and it did begin to spread a little bit through the rain of the year and then the following year after that which i believe was last year it really took off because it had the whole winter to get rooted it took off was able to start fertilizing it and now so i'm like basically you know three and a half years into the process i guess and it's not perfect but you see what you're looking at i'm going to show you some other parts of the yard as well Here's just a little panoramic view of what it looks like today. Not perfect, I can show you some bare spots. Look at there, bare spot. I told you there would be some. And you can see some of the areas that are still bare. It makes a lot of sense why. As you can see, I'm basically trying to grow Bermuda grass on top of rocks. So very compacted, rocky soil in some of these areas, and it's not doing so great. And I, I did try top dressing some of the worst areas, but still struggling a little bit. Now over here, I came under these big trees and I thought, well, what are we gonna do over here? And I just bought a little bit of St. Augustine grass. Now I'm in the Birmingham, Alabama market and we're kind of toward the northernmost part uh, where St. Augustine will grow, but we do have a little bit in our air. So I threw it out, same style, just threw out a couple random pieces. Well, not a couple, but you can see how I spaced them out. Put one there, one there, one there. And they've been spreading, that was probably two years ago maybe and so i'm not in a hurry i am a little bit but i'm thinking in the next uh, you know maybe two more years this might be solid saint augustine now again terrible dirt right here eating with these oak trees under for a lot of uh, shade being caused here and then as you cross over here i call this saint augustine island my little culvert's washing out a little bit i can still straddle that ditch but the St. Augustine's doing a little bit better but if I had a way to water it obviously it would do better so along this back fence line I'm trying to grow some trees to give me a little bit more privacy and also block some of the road noise so this area gets a little wet I've got a bald cypress tree I've got about 30 uh, green giant arborvitas a few magnolia trees so you can see what it looks like down through there not looking too good here but I'm hoping it'll fill in over time Another bald cypress tree, kind of down here in this wet area. Let's move on to a different part of the yard. Another example where the grass is not growing very well in this spot, I think this is just a lot of clay in this soil. Even this crepe myrtle tree, which I planted this winter, is struggling to make it, it starts drying out real quick. Now it probably help if I put some mulch or something to kind of protect the roots. This ground right here is just not doing very well because I'm thinking the Bermuda grass, for some reason, is just not doing great in this particular area now if you move this way i've got this huge oak tree which is obviously causing some shade issues for the bermuda grass so what i did this year was i just took a few pieces of emerald zoysia and threw them out so there's some emerald zoysia here's some emerald zoysia and they're spread out about 10 feet apart so it literally might take this 10 years to fill in but at some point i think this emerald zoysia might fill in a lot of this area that's getting limited sunlight where the Bermuda grass just wasn't going to grow long term. You can see a little Bermuda and it does get some sunlight, but it's not doing good. So I'm hoping that piece of emerald zoysia will spread over time and maybe I'll get some more emerald zoysia at some point. Now, this has been a process the whole time, and this area here I put out some Zorro zoysia, which is very similar to emerald zoysia. You can see here it's fairly green. That's some bark off this crepe myrtle tree so i've got these giant crepe myrtle trees and this was not growing very well so i put some of this zoysia down here now the last two years it's been really pretty in the springtime and then as, as these trees fill out i believe it's blocking the sunlight 
and really limiting so it struggles a little bit during the summer also want to try this next year just not really putting much herbicide on it and see if i can make it as healthy as possible i probably wouldn't hurt also with this compacted soil if i was able to aerate it and maybe get some deeper roots now in a more recent update this part here used to be a gravel driveway we renovated the house and this was a gravel driveway that circled around the house if you don't believe me here's some evidence it's still of the gravel well, what we did is similar process took two pallets of bermuda and put it in this area we did that this spring and so about mm, five months ago maybe and you can see it is trying its best to spread and it has filled in most of this area so it covered from you know basically all this area here and it's still got some bare spots obviously i'm filming this video in august i'm hoping by October that this is about 95% filled in. I'm not sure if we're gonna get there or not, but it looks a lot better than it did. And, and surely by next year, it'll be nice. I did a little top dressing on this to try to smooth it out a little bit, but it does wash a little when it rains. So maybe next year I might have to top dress it a, a little bit more and try to get it a little smoother. Since I didn't sod it solid, I just kind of threw random pieces out like we did back there. But I did them a lot closer together in this area. There's my two biggest fans here doing their morning routine. The front yard when we bought the house was grass, but it was honestly, it was just terrible. So I sprayed it with weed killer twice, and then we did the same thing. Did Plugged it with sod. I'm not sure I threw any whole pieces out here. I think I just took the little sod plugs, and you can see where it has filled in. Now, again, we renovated the house. They put in a septic system in here and it kind of did a lot of stuff in the yard, but it's, it's mostly recovered from that. So this is the current situation. It's pretty much all solid Bermuda and looks pretty good when you mow it. The hillside over there is a pain to do some trimming, so sometimes I have to, I just spray it so I don't have to maintain it as much. Similar situation with these trees. I put some zoysia down under that this spring, definitely, Needs a little bit of water. You can see it's not got great color, but I think if I can just get it to the winter this year and get it established next year, I'm have high hopes that this could look great and fill in this area where the Bermuda grass just wasn't gonna grow. And lastly, I got a little bit of a fruit garden out here. I got some uh, 21 blueberry bushes, peach tree, fig tree, muscadines. I've got two trees. It's what's called a pawpaw tree that, that makes a particular type of fruit. I've got a persimmon tree. So it's something fun that we do with our family and get out here and the kids like running out here picking blueberries, picking muscadines, picking figs, stuff like that. They're easy to grow in our area. So there was a lot of thought that went into this yard when I became time to transform it. Where I'm standing, where these fruit trees was, again, all woods had to all be cleared. Nothing to work with starting from scratch. So there was some leveling done with skid steers, box play with a tractor. Yes, you think, well, why didn't you just seed it? Well, again, you have to seed it in the, in the summertime with our warm season grasses. And then how are you gonna keep it watered when it's several acres? I don't have irrigation to cover that much land. So I put out, plugged aside, threw out some whole pieces aside, let it spread over time. Bermuda grass spreads really fast. If you're gonna do it with zoysia, you're gonna have a long, long wait. Centipede St. Augustine, somewhere in between zoysia and Bermuda, they spread fairly fast, but not as fast as Bermuda. Looking back, if I had it to do over again, what would I do different? Possibly just waiting until the late fall or something to put out the Bermuda grass so that it would have had a much better chance of surviving. I did it a couple of times in the summer. It was really difficult to keep it alive and to get it to the fall. Once I made it to the fall, it survived. But my, my thought was at the time, hey, I can put it out now and I've got some time for it to start growing and spreading. Well, that would have been great if we'd had a lot of rain or if I was able to keep it water, but when it goes really dry in July, August, September, then you're basically just trying to keep it surviving and there's not much spreading going on. It survives, gets to the winter, the next spring it comes out green and takes off the following year. So I probably would have been just as good just putting it out in the winter time and not trying to keep it alive like I had to do. This video is to show you what my property looks like, show you how you can transform a property. Again, people that watch the channel, they ask me for updates from time to time, so here's your update. I'm Jason Creel, thanks for watching. If you wanna get into the lawn care business, weed control, fertilization, mowing, any of that, go to lawncarelife.com, there's resources for you there. If you hadn't signed up, go to the Equip Expo, which used to be the GIE Plus Expo. You can sign up in the next month or so and use the promo code Lawn Care Life. That's all one word, Lawn Care Life. You'll save half off 
your ticket. You can sign up after that, but that's when the early bird discount ends sometime in September. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.